A lot of you have asked me why some people say YouTube and Tuesday instead of YouTube and Tuesday. On the other hand, nobody has asked me why most native speakers say statue and situation instead of statue and situation. But actually, it's the same phenomenon. So let's get into that right now. If you saw my last video on train changing and street shopping, you'll know that those pronunciations are triggered by English R. Well, the YouTube type pronunciation, which I'm going to call tuna chewing, is triggered by the sound U. And when I say the sound U, I don't mean U, I mean U beginning with the sound Y. The phonetic symbol for Y is a J, as in Jägermeister. This sound Y is all over the place in English, in literally thousands of words. Sometimes it's written with the letter Y, as in yes, you, yet, young, but most of the time the sound Y is not written with the letter Y. It's hiding inside the letter U. How did it get there? Where did it come from? In 1066, England was taken over by French-speaking Vikings, Norsemen who'd been living in France just long enough to become Normans. Probably nothing did more to make English the messed up thing it is than a few hundred years with French spoken by the elite and Middle English spoken by the masses. Bring out your if you studied French at all, you'll know that the letter U in French has a distinctive pronunciation. Don't try to be funny with me, monsieur. This French U, which is also in German, Mandarin Chinese and other languages, is in fact a composite vowel. It contains two elements. The tongue makes an E vowel, while the lips are rounded as in a classic U vowel. If you keep your lips rounded as if you're whistling, and then make an E sound inside your mouth behind the lips, the result is this French type U. If you don't believe me, record yourself and listen to the result. Now, when French words like these were absorbed into Middle English, speakers split the French U vowel into its two elements, E then U, making a two-part diphthong, EU. And there was also a second bunch of old English words like fewe and neuwe that shifted more or less simultaneously to have this same ew diphthong. Now in Wales, things kind of stayed like this and Welsh English still has pronunciations like music and feel. But elsewhere, the e part of the diphthong turned from a vowel into a consonant glide. In other words, our y sound music, few, etc. And this is why the English letter names are not A-E-I-O-U, but A-E-I-O-U. Now it's a bit odd having a Y stuck to the front of one of your vowels. I mean, we have make and me and mile and most, but music and museum and mutant and mucus, etc. It's just a bit of a pain, especially when the preceding consonant, unlike M, is made with the tip of the tongue, like T, D, N, S. These tip of the tongue consonants, as you may remember if you saw my last video, are called alveolar, or American alveolar. S, Our Y sound, by contrast, is a palatal sound, made with the tongue bunched up a bit further back in the mouth. Uh, yeah. And just as we saw in the last video with alveolars followed by R, so we find that English has a habit of taking these alveolar plus Y sequences and simplifying them. In the rest of the video, we're going to look at the two main ways this simplifying happens in various accents of English. The first is simply to drop the Y sound. This is known as Yod dropping because Yod is the name that we give in phonetics to the Y sound. Most of us have yod dropping in su at the beginning of a word. For example, suit and super. In fact, we find it quite amusing if we hear posh old-fashioned speakers retaining the y as in superman suit. American English has extended this yod dropping after alveolar consonants. Most Americans preserve the yod in cube but drop it in tube. They preserve it in immune, but drop it in dune. They drop it in luke, but keep it in puke. And they drop it in consume, intuition, and ursula, but keep it in confuse, amputation, and dracula. 
Some accents take yod dropping even further than in America. Many speakers in this eastern region of England can have yod dropping after all consonants, not just the alveolars. This beautiful golden bird is the best turkey I've ever produced. My new golden drummers. Now let's look at the other way speakers simplify a sequence of an alveolar plus yod. This is by merging or coalescing the two sounds, creating a new sound intermediate between the two. If you saw my last video, you'll know that this intermediate zone is called postalveolar. This merger or coalescence happens widely across many accents right after a stress. So T and yod coalesce to form postalveolar ch, as in statue, situation, fortune, virtual, congratulations, etc. D and yod coalesce to form postalveolar. J, as in graduate, procedure, individual, education. S and yod coalesce to form postalveolar. Sh, as in sensual, issue, pressure. Z and yod coalesce to form postalveolar. Z, as in seizure, visual, usual, treasury. Now, in stressed positions, accents vary in how much they do this yod coalescence or tuna chewing. Aside from the bootiful type of speakers in the East, people in England do it a lot and increasingly. So in a word like this one, we have those who drop the yod, like most Americans. YouTube. 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 Those who keep it. Look at the YouTube video again. YouTube. And tuna chewers like me who do yod coalescence. YouTube on iTunes or on YouTube, YouTube. Likewise, in this word, Americans generally drop the yod. Dune. 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 Some Brits keep it. Dune. You can't do dune in a movie. Dune. And some, including me, coalesce it so it sounds exactly like the month, June. My native accent, I'm from Merseyside, is about as coalescent as you can get. I have presume and presumably, which isn't as common, but probably spreading. I don't presume, presume. I think we presume, we presume. And like the street shopping I discussed last time, my native accent can do stupid shopping. Like a stupid Rod Stewart costume. Some speakers have stupid shopping and street shopping. And also the idea that you can restrict protests that are noisy is really stupid. Strict stupid. Strict stupid. There's a lot of variation in yod dropping and yod coalescence as we move from accent to accent and even from word to word. Some speakers have tuna chewing and stupid shopping in some words, but American style yod dropping in other words like new or new. They've done some stuff that's really, really stupid. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Stupid. No. Stupid. No. Things get even more complicated with words borrowed into the language relatively recently. If a word arrived in English quite a while ago, there's a good chance it was nativized or treated as if it was a long-standing English word. The island of Cuba entered English centuries ago and was awarded a yod, Cuba. But words that arrived more recently tend not to be nativized so much. So it would be a bit weird to have a jacuzzi. They have a brancusi in the bathroom. Do you mean a jacuzzi? No, they have one of those as well. Likewise, we've long been familiar with Ukraine, but we don't try to nativize Uma to Yuma. And over a century ago, we got to know Rasputin, who was given a yod, as in disputing. But more recently, speakers avoid putting a yod in Putin, mostly. President Putin. 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 Vladimir Putin has a few more aces up his sleeve, and he has the endorsement of Vladimir Putin himself. Putin. 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 Putin himself. And similarly, we don't say Sudokyu or Malibu or Kianyu. Speaking of whom, we can get the same thing when an English accent that generally pronounces yods takes a new word from an accent that drops them. 
Dude. 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 In the UK, we may tend to say Dune or even June, but no Brit would be so uncool as to use a yod in dude. Some 40 something dude. It was a dude. A confident dude. One dude even said, There's this dude. We spoke to some dude. The dude who. Super popular dude. There's a dude. There's Herman Miller dude. This dude. You're a cool dude. Random dude. Adolf Hitler was one bad dude. Weird dude. Bad dude. Random dude. Some dude. Older dude. French dude. German dude. White dude. Another dude. 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 That's cool, dude. Or maybe there is one Brit who would. I say to all the doubters, dude, we are going to energize the country. We're going to get Brexit done. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Are you sure? That's so much better.